so that all of you are aware. Um, but what's what most amazing is the people of this country and their response to this and uh, and how many of us were in kind of our own little world thinking that we had these thoughts and these beliefs but there wasn't very many people out there that had the same thoughts and the same beliefs and we had these problems and these challenges but uh, we might be the only ones or our area or our, our, our communities Turn it back the only ones ones that are having this problem. And uh, through this, we know that it's not that. We know that, that the overreaching federal government is throughout all the states. And, uh, and that's why we're here. That's why we, we've united. And uh, we're certainly making a statement, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about our feelings. Uh, when we, a week ago, when I rolled in here, I rolled in right here, and my brothers had these flags all set up. And uh, it was pretty amazing. They did it with a little rundown forklift. And uh, those wires are barbless bob wire coming down here. And uh, I came in here and I was pretty proud of what they did. I loved the sign and I, I was ready to ready to fight. And I looked up on those hills and they, they were completely occupied. Uh, and we were under martial law by an unauthorized agency. And that's the way it was. If we stepped off the road, they would pound off and we would shove our faces in the dirt. And to have the bad feeling, I've never had it before in this country, to have the feeling of freedom taken away from you. My friends, it is not a good feeling. It is not a good feeling. My family and the community has run these hills and enjoyed these hills for generations. Never once in the history of this nation have those mountains ever been restricted from us. Never. And yet this week, they were. So a battle began. Uh, a battle on the roadside where my brother was uh, taken down by about 20 agencies and taken to a federal court or a federal uh, jail. And we had to battle for him, and then they didn't even prosecute him, just jumped, dumped him out on the street once they knew that everybody's going to make a big enough scheme. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we had another young man down here that pulled off on this little road right here. He's done it his whole life. He's, he's 16 years old, and they surrounded him and began to do the same thing. But we had about 30 or 40 people right here, and we headed over there as fast as we could, and we backed them down. Okay, and we pushed them off. That's what we did. And then we had another incident after they cleared all the cattle up here. We had to deal with their helicopters and their snipers and their rifles and their guards and all of that garbage. We had to deal with that here for almost a week while they gathered our personal properties to sell. And then to top it off, they had the goal to take a backhoe and a dump truck and go up there and destroy these waters that have been out here over over 100 years. And so we decided to put it into that, but we were up against 13 armed vehicles. I mean, armed by these men were highly armed, and they had to, they had dogs. And we went down there, and we backed them off, and we found out what was in the back of that truck, and then we sent them packing. And uh, yeah, there was a little, there was some fatalities. Uh, or not fatality, there was some, some uh, people hurt and some things happened. But uh, we did it peacefully in the sense that we were, we were just pushing back and just pushing back. And that we did what we had to do and then we sent them back in. And we showed them at that time that the people have the power. When we unite, we have the power.
Americans, uh, friends, the, this battle is not over, right. and uh, it's not over here, okay? And the war has just begun, yes. okay? But I also want to say this. I, I know we have a huge variety of people here, and many of you have different faith. Or maybe you, many of you consider that you have no faith. But I'm here to tell you that the American people, the American people have their God. Whatever you may call him, he is a cre we have a creator. And that creator, that creator, is looking over us and caring for us. And he is leading this fight. Okay? And I'd like to just explain something. That Creator wants us to choose him. Okay? He does not want us, he does not force us to, to choose him. And in order for us to choose him, what do we have to have? We have to have freedom. We have to have the agency to choose him, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so agency is most important to our creator. Otherwise, we cannot choose him. And his hand has been all over this this battle. Okay? And his protection has been all over this. And I'm telling you that this battle is at the point, and you guys are going to find this out soon, this battle is at the point where we the people in this area have nothing to fear. Okay? We have nothing to fear. We, we, we can, we can carry our weapons if we like, right? Because we have a Second Amendment right. Okay? And that those are God-given rights. Thank you. Those, those are rights. Those Second Amendment rights are just rights that are inevitably given to us, and we wrote them down on paper and said we're going to respect these rights. Okay? But so those are, those are our rights. But, I say but because we, we don't have to carry them right now because we're afraid. Okay? I'm telling you that right now because there's been a lot of people that are afraid. And I know that feeling. And just a few days ago, just yesterday even, just yesterday evening, I was really afraid. Okay? I've had, and my family's had a lot of manipulation going on. But you know what? Today, we have been confirmed from our Creator that we do not need to be afraid. Okay? This is His battle. This is His battle. Um, I uh, was wondering if my Uncle C would come up here and talk to us. And I know I'm putting him totally on the spot, and that's a big group. But I also know where his convictions are and, and his dedication to freedom is. And I would like him to come up and talk to us. So, and just so you know, kind of what's going on is we're waiting for um, our county sheriff to join us. We are. No? Okay. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, okay? But that may be the case. And what he said was the sheriff might be coming or he might be here, but he may not, he may not be. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he, he's got a sheriff. He, so, but the sheriff is coming, okay? And my father is coming, and they're going to talk about something that we don't know. Because the sheriff called my dad, and he said, well, I want to talk to you. We're, you know, can we go in a back room and talk? And my dad said, no. If we're going to have this dialogue, we're going to have the dialogue in front of the people. Yeah. And so my dad doesn't know what the sheriff has come to talk about. He does not know. And so it will be a true uh, dialogue. And so the only thing I ask is that we be respectful. Uh, and I know that we have, we, we, we realize
that he has not stood up to, to what his constitutional uh, uh, duties are. Right. Okay? We know that. But, but let's just hear him out and let's see what he has to say and let him let them have that dialogue. And uh, and then we'll know where we're at when when, when we're done. Okay? I'm going to turn the time over to uh, my Uncle Steve.